Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to City Skylines. Today, we have another Let's Build. This is the Inverted Tiered City, which is something people have been asking for since the initial, the original Tiered City got a fair bit of attention. So I thought, you know, it's been a couple of weeks since the Tiered City. We might as well jump in and see what we can do with an Inverted one. And this isn't quite the Inverted Tiered City that I think people... Uh, necessarily wanted, I'll be honest. It's the tiered, it's the inverted tiered city that I wanted. Obviously, I, I built it. Uh, but I, I think when people said they wanted an inverted one, they wanted something that looked more like a quarry. I decided to go with something that, from the outside of the city, looks like the original. Sort of. Uh, but on the inside is, is the complete opposite. So, the original tiered city went up three layers, kind of like a, a wedding cake. This one is like a shallow, weird volcano quarry hybrid. So basically every alien planet in Doctor Who, uh, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> so basically there are four tiers to this city. Three of them you can live in, one of them you cannot because the very top tier is actually just completely water. Which might sound a little bit weird, but uh, I I actually think you might like what I did with the top tier and water in this city because it's actually a little bit more creative than what I did with the uh, water in the original tiered city, which was a sort of little uh, pond thing that came from the Cathedral of, uh, of, of Plantitude and kind of looked... I mean, while I liked it, I did say in the video at the time, like, it's completely unrealistic and makes no sense, which might be a bit of a redundant statement when you you look at that city the whole thing is unrealistic and makes no sense and this one is much the same really unrealistic makes no sense and water comes from nowhere in fact even more water comes from nowhere in this city so uh yeah good job me going for uh going for realism as i always do in city skylines obviously so I do want to talk about a little, yeah, let's try speaking properly here. I do want to talk a little bit about uh, the inspiration for this city. It did come from uh, a lot of people commenting saying, you know, do the inverted tiered city. But it also came from a picture that I saw on the City Skyline subreddit. And I honestly don't remember who it was posted by. And to be honest, I don't even know if they were the uh, original... Uh, author of the image, so it, no, I say author, it was a screenshot from City Skyline, so it's not like they went out and drew it, but whatever. I don't know if they were the, the original creator of it, so I don't know if it necessarily matters, and I didn't copy the build anyway. Basically, it was uh, a city that was built up on this kind of platform, much like this city sort of is. Uh, it didn't sink down into it, the entire platform was water, with water flowing off the sides in a few places. And then the only land masses within that water were really, really densely packed with tall buildings and then everything else was bridges and roads. And it looks kind of cool and I liked it and I, I wanted to do something like that, but then I decided, you know what? Why don't we combine that with the inverted tiered city idea and see what comes of it? So I did and this is what I wound up with. Now, what we're doing at the moment, as you can see, I'm uh, using roads to measure out some, some channels these channels are super interesting and were really, really tricky to do. Because what I wanted was a ring of water going around the very top layer of the city, but then I wanted it towards the front of the city to come down from the top layer to the very bottom one. And then from the bottom layer, I wanted it to flow sort of out through the city to the ocean. So there's sort of this uh, this kind of uh, horseshoe shaped flow of water and then it comes down in a V shape and then from the V it sort of goes straight out to see it's it's you'll see it when it's done. I realize I'm trying to explain something to you when I have, you know, the video to uh, show you it at some point. So, you know, good job me. I'm doing what uh, I'm doing what the new Ghostbusters trailer did. I'm telling you and not showing you, which is not, not how you make videos. And I'm throwing shade at the new Ghostbusters trailer in a City Skylines video. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit salty about the Ghostbusters trailer, guys. I'm gonna be honest. Little bit salty. But, uh, whatever the case, moving on from terrible things to something that's much more interesting, I'm just working here on the, uh, side channels for the water. These are the two channels that are gonna make the V shape for uh, the water to come down from the top layer, uh, through all of my layers, and then out through the middle that, you know, the middle channel that's already there. It was a little bit, uh, tricky working on this city in general, because I did end up doing it in a way that I didn't see myself doing it. Which was, I did all of the terraforming and road layouts and everything before I really put in any buildings, which isn't something I did with the original. The original tiered city was uh, built from the top down. You know, I did the top layer, then I went, well, I did, I suppose, do most of the terraforming in that as well, but this one was completely different. Like, this had a lot of terraforming. Like, we're, uh, what, like, six minutes and 12 seconds into the video, approximately. And, uh, I mean, I'm still on terraforming, and this is usually something I leave to the end of a build, if I, I can, which, uh, obviously with this kind of build, you, you really can't do that. But, uh, it, it was just, it was interesting, uh, tackling a build like this, where terraforming is, is everything, and I actually don't, I don't necessarily zone all that much in the way of, well, anything. There's there's not a hell of a lot of commercial zoning. There's not a hell of a lot of uh, uh, industrial zoning. I don't think I did any offices. I actually forgot about that. It's just, it's just hit me now that I didn't do any offices and that wasn't intentional. That was me forgetting to do offices. So, uh, good job, me. That's, uh, that's, that's just great. That's, it's always good when you forget about something that's been in the game since day one and that you use on a daily basis every time you play it. So, yeah, well done. But uh, there we go with the side channels. I think they're pretty much done there. I know I get rid of, um, in fact, I think I already got rid of the road that was sort of in the way. Yeah, I did that a while ago. Uh, just going in here and adding the water sources, which end up glitching and flooding the entire city. It uh, actually turns out that all I need is one water source. But this does give you a good idea of how the city's gonna look when the water's flowing properly. Obviously, ignore the uh, flooding in the entire lower level there. That was basically because there wasn't enough, uh, there wasn't enough space at the bottom for the water to uh, occupy, so it just flooded out over the banks and uh, flooded the lower tier of my city. Basically, the reason for that is that, you know, you have these two flows of water uh, coming down into one channel, so you're going to want to have a lot of space for that water to occupy because it's going to be moving pretty quickly. It's going downhill. And, you know, it just it needs to be able to uh, occupy a lot of space and uh, get out of there quite quickly. But we're kind of more or less done with the uh, actual slopes themselves. And I think that was me just adding in the one water source that we really needed. Uh, what we will be doing in a little bit after we sort of plan the roads of this lower tier is, uh, yeah, just doing it now. We go in and get rid of a lot of the roads which were used as uh, barriers and guides uh, to uh, basically separate the side channels from the central channel. I wanted to get rid of those because I really... I really didn't like them, basically. I, I think they looked a little bit too uh, rigid and sort of... I, I don't want to use the word uh, man-made because that seems a little bit redundant in this kind of city. But uh, I like what I'm doing here, you know, with the slopes and the the curving terrain and all that stuff. I think it just, it does look more natural, I guess, which is completely stupid to say in a city that's obviously incredibly man-made. I mean, any city is man-made, but even the terrain in this case, you know, you know what I mean. It's, it's fine. Anyway, what we're doing here is uh, what we ended up doing with the original tiered city as well. We are smoothing out the sides a little bit, so it's not just a flat... Uh, wall. What this also does is uh, it actually helps hide some of the uh, terrain glitches that you get when you terraform around roads. If you've ever seen anyone terraform around roads, if you've ever terraformed around roads, hell, I think you can even see it in the original tiered city. You, uh, you end up with these situations where you can sort of see through the map because the game isn't really supposed, it's not designed 
for you to have these like sharp cutoffs at the sides of roads. So, you know, smoothing out the terrain here uh, basically helps to mask that. And that's something I wanted to uh, do. And I just like it. I think there were a couple of people in the uh, tiered city, the original one, that said uh, it looked better without the smoothing. But I'll be honest, I just prefer it. I, I think it does look better with the uh, smooth sides and, you know, it hides any glitches in the terrain. And in a little bit, we actually go ahead and smooth the uh, insides of the city as well, which looks even better. I, I'm definitely glad I smoothed those out because at the minute it looks a little bit, a uh, little bit worse for wear. It doesn't really have the, the look I want it to have right now. So there we go. I think we're about to... Uh, to do it, if I'm not mistaken, do I end up do a, do a smooth mic here, or am I? No, I'm still trying to work out how exactly people are going to get up into the uh, the other levels of the city. And what we end up doing is actually uh, something I'm quite happy with. We end up uh, well. First off, I think we uh, we plan out this this channel much in the way we planned out a channel for the water to flow in. But then, you know, upon smoothing out a little bit of the uh, the terrain here, making the slope for it. I realize, you know what? I can, uh, I can totally smooth out the, uh, th this entire thing. At least I realized that eventually. I thought I realized it sooner than I did. But, uh, yeah, just adding in the two four-lane one-way roads there that sort of act as a, I guess, an avenue through the city. And, uh, those are pretty much going to be the main way to get up and down through the city. There we go. Finally smoothing out the edges there. I uh, jumped the gun a little bit on that one, so you're welcome. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so yeah, smoothing out the inside edges of the city. It just looks much better. It really does. I uh, I, I really enjoy how that looks. I will be honest. Uh, so just touching up the dividing land masses for the side channels and central channel there, making sure that they don't overflow or anything, so digging out a little bit more terrain for the water to flow through. And uh, then I realized there's no connection to the very top tier. So what we end up doing is adding in this big uh, section of eight lane avenue. And this actually works kind of really well. I'm, I'm really happy with how this ends up looking. It is the main entrance to the city. So it's, it's kind of the only uh, entrance to the city for a while because I didn't really plan this at all. I really didn't think about how people were going to get up and down between layers, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we get there eventually. Uh, so what I'm doing at the moment is just trying to figure out how exactly, uh, we're going to do zoning. And I end up going with this design, which is just, you know, sort of like the spokes of a wheel. We just have avenues coming off of the, uh, the eight lane road in, in the, I suppose the inside of each tier. And it looks kind of good. I, I think it's obviously very simple. But uh, simple doesn't necessarily mean bad in this case. I think the uh, the simple look of the, the road layout actually, for one, helps traffic move about a little bit. And uh, for two, it just adds to the sort of sci-fi sort of fantasy look that we have going on here. And uh, sticking with symmetry, of course, I end up uh, basically mirroring everything that I place. So if there is a medical clinic on the left side of the city, it's sort of in the same place on the right. If there's a hospital, it's in the same place on the other side. Same with fire stations and police stations and uh, schools and universities and all that stuff just gets uh, cloned across the city. And uh, we end up have actually having some pretty good coverage because of it. I, uh, I do make sure to have more or less the best coverage that I can for everything. What I will say, though, is uh, I just noticed that I placed some bus depots. I uh, I never wind up doing anything with those. I don't have buses in this city or any form of public transport, which is, uh, I mean, depending on how you look at it, possibly a bad thing. I think I've mentioned before, but I, I will mention again just for the sake of it and to remind people. I, uh, I, I don't necessarily build these cities to be functional. That's, that's just something I, I always want to stress. Like, these cities aren't designed to actually be, uh, playable. This one, I think, is, uh, which is interesting. It wasn't designed to be at all. I didn't think it would be. But, uh, th this one, I think, is playable because, 
Uh, traffic actually ends up moving pretty well around it, and there don't seem to be all that many traffic jams. I think you'll spot one or two in the cinematic at the end, but, uh, I mean, other than those, you know, it's, I guess, playable. You just can't really edit the roads or the buildings or a lot of things because the terraforming is completely reliant on the positioning of the roads. So, you know, when I say it's playable, I mean it's something you could load up and look at and then get really bored of because you can't actually play it. So, there you go. And uh, I think what I'll do as well is I realize I haven't put the... I don't know if the tiered city is actually on the Steam Workshop. I don't think it is. I think the Canal Stone and the Casino Strip are, but I never put the tiered city or the City of Tomorrow on. So what I'll do, uh, by the time you're seeing this video, I will have put the tiered city, the City of Tomorrow, and this city onto the Steam Workshop. I do want to stress, though, I use a lot of mods to make these. If you don't have network extensions, it's not going to work. There's a couple of custom, there's actually a lot of custom trees, a few custom assets. Like, you need all that stuff to make this work. And, uh, I do have a collection somewhere on Steam. It's a little bit outdated, so what I'll do is, uh, attempt to update that, and I'll make sure to have it all linked in the description below, because I know a lot of people have been asking for what mods I use and what assets I use, so I will get those to you. Also, this shot here is one I think I mentioned earlier, uh, just showing you how much traffic winds up coming into the city on uh, those bridges from the sides. And uh, what you'll have actually seen with those bridges as well is that uh, there is one that goes around the back of the city, which does get a, bit, a, uh, a decent bit of use at some point. But, you know, I just thought it looked interesting having that uh, arcing road going back there as well. And now what we're doing is the fun part. We're adding in so many trees. Seriously, I there are so many trees, but I'm actually very happy with how this ends up looking. There's uh there's a lot of park space. There's a lot of red. There's a lot of green, but I am still absolutely in love with using the red trees as an accent to the uh, the green and blue of the city. It just looks so good. What I also wound up doing was using the uh resource painting tool that comes with the terraforming tool to uh, paint in fertile land because that brightens up the grass to be almost yellow, which looks, again, really good against the red. So, you know, I, I, I guess I was using every kind of tool that I had this time around. That's something I've been kind of considering doing for a while. I, I've always looked at the terraforming, the not the terraforming, the uh, resource painting thing as uh, something that could be really useful for that kind of, you know, uh, differentiating a park from a suburb or whatever, you know, you can use darker grass for suburbs if you want to, use lighter grass for parks. And I think in this case, the lighter grass just, again, just works so well. I think I end up using the lighter grass for pretty much the entire uh, lower tier of the city, which is fine because the lower tier winds up being very, uh, I guess, just white, blue, and, and green. So using that... Uh, sort of yellowy grass when combined with the red of the, the various trees I'm using and the pinks from the cherry trees and all that stuff. It just looks, it really looks so good. I'm, I'm so pleased with how these parks turned out. And there are a lot of them. I mean, while they won't necessarily boost the land value of the city, of course, because they're not actually park assets, I really like how they look. I, I honestly think the red is such a nice addition to these kind of cities, and at some point I need to find a new color to play with, because I'm getting, I imagine people are getting a little bit sick of seeing uh, the same cherry trees and the same red trees through all of my cities, so I'll look for some purple ones or something, some blue trees, I don't know, we'll find something or other. But whatever the case, I am actually going to leave it there for today. That is the inverted tiered city or tiered city 2.0 it's probably called the inverted tiered city because tiered city 2.0 sounds much lazier so we'll go with inverted tiered city if you have any suggestions for something you would like to see me build in city skylines or any game by the way i'm gonna do some uh, some let's builds in other games as well i'm looking at uh 
Minecraft, City Skylines, and there was another one. The Sims. Sims 4. That's one. So if you've got anything you want to see me build in those, do be sure to let me know. But uh, other than that, like I said, that's going to be it. So thank you kind of for watching. There are, of course, going to be some cinematics. And I'm actually a really big fan of the song I used for this one, which I have uh, named on screen when the cinematic rolls around. So you'll be happy for that, I hope. Yeah. That's going to be it. So thank you kind of for watching. This has been City Skylines and the Inverted Tiered City. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.